Uh, we're joined by Susan McKay, journalist who has written quite a bit about um, Susan McKay, the other person, has joined a bit, uh, quite, written quite a bit about the Jean McConville issue, and uh, Carrie Toomey, who is uh, much involved in the Boston College Oral History Project, and it was that project and that, um, uh, that organised interviews with Brendan Hughes and Dolores Price, both now deceased, both IRA leaders, both of whom have said that Jerry Adams was involved in the killing of uh, Jean McConville. Um, Let's talk a bit about the kill, killing of Jean McConville um, first, uh, Susan. Um, what, in, is, as far as you know, is the evidence that uh, Jerry Adams had any involvement with it? Well, um, he has been said to have been involved by uh, several senior Republican figures who would have known. And um, I think that his denials of involvement are seriously undermined, unfortunately, for him by the fact that he denies that he was even in the IRA. So given that we cannot possibly credibly believe that he wasn't in the IRA, we can't then take seriously his denials that he wasn't involved in the Jean McConville case, given that senior figures are saying that he was and that all the evidence seems to point to the fact that he was a senior figure in the IRA in West Belfast at that time. People are speculating tonight that he may be charged with the, in connection with the murder of Jim McConville. What possible evidence is there to charge him, as far as you know? Um, I don't think that there's any prospect that Jerry Adams could be convicted in relation to this murder. And I, I notice in one of the, the papers tonight that um, Helen McHenry, um, Jean McConville's very brave and outspoken daughter, has said the same, that That's she doesn't garden, actually yeah. believe that, that he will end up being uh, convicted of it. It would all be hearsay evidence and it's extremely unlikely that Ivor Bell is going to talk uh, in, in court about this. So, and the other people who have spoken extensively about it are, as you said in your intro, dead. So it's extremely unlikely that she's, yeah. she, it's ever... The but tapes I mean, themselves couldn't really get into evidence. Um, I can't see how they could. Uh, no, uh, no. I mean, Jean McConville was one of uh, up, to, up around 400 people who were killed in 1972 and a great many of, of the 3,600 people who were killed in the course of the conflict in the North have not got justice, will not get justice. I mean, I think when Sinn Féin talks about this being about political policing, what's political about the policing of it is in fact the fact that the politicians have left this to the police and they shouldn't have. They, they need to find some mechanism to deal with these issues in a fair and um, way which is compatible with everybody's right to justice. It's totally wrong that, that, that this should be a matter for the police and, and that certain cases are getting attention and others aren't. Um, Carrie, uh, the, the, this, in, uh, this inquiry and uh, the uh, Jerry Adams' attention arises, it seems, from the Boston College tapes and wh where uh, d Tapes with Dolores Price says that he was involved. She was. She acknowledges that she was involved. I understand in the killing of Jean McConville, but says that Jerry Adams ordered it. And similarly, Brendan Hughes, who was the close associate in the IRA with Jerry Adams, says that Jerry Adams ordered it. Um, yet Dolores Price and um, uh, and uh, Brendan Hughes didn't ever ant anticipate that their interviews would ever be used for these purposes. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a problem here. Well, yes, these, these interviews were done as a way of gathering the history of the conflict, and the, they are not uh, a way of gathering criminal evidence, and they were never meant to be getting criminal evidence mm -hmm. or used as criminal evidence. And the problem is with the subpoenaing of these records and the chilling effect that it's had on people who are willing to come forward and tell their story, which is our history that we're being denied, uh, th these, it, 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 it shuts down everything uh, in terms of being able to get to the truth. And it's very important, I, I think, as Susan said, that the politicians need to step forward and, and figure out a way to deal with the past that is not left to the police. Because if it's left to the police and it's left to the state, we will have a sanitized version of the past that lets the state off the hook. Uh, your uh, husband uh, was... Sorry, could I just correct you there? Actually, Dolores Price first uh, 
gave her statement about this to Alison Morris in the Irish News when she was alive, That's obviously. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. And so I think that Dolores Price would have been perfectly happy to go into court and stand up against Gerry Adams or anybody else. Dolores Price was obsessed with Gerry Adams and very clearly wanted to bring him down. So she was willing to give evidence against him and uh, would have quite happily done so. I I think I'm, not, I'm not sure she would have done so. Yeah, her evidence sure would have been credible. I'm not sure that she would have, she would have gone into so, court yeah. on it, but I do think that it, that's a very good point to make because it underlines how the politics of this has played out. Uh, Dolores did that interview with Alison Morris in 2010, uh, and that interview was manipulated by the Sunday Life following the publication of it. Uh, to uh, their reporting made it appear as if they heard the Boston College tapes, which was virtually impossible because the interviews that Anthony McIntyre had conducted with Dolores did not discuss the McConville case. So there's no way the Sunday Life's report... Uh, Anthony McIntyre is your husband. Yes. Uh, and, and he was present for the interview that Dolores Price gave. Is that right? He conducted the interviews with the Republican side of the Oral History Project. And the point is that that was in 2010 that this was conducted. The Irish News was never approached until 16 months after that interview was conducted when it was pointed out in court that the police had not gone to the Irish News or the Sunday Life and said, well, here's this information, this new information, here's somebody coming forward, give us your notes. Now, obviously, they would have the different... Are you saying that in, in the interview, uh, the Boston College uh, uh, t a taped interview that your husband gave, uh, uh, sorry, that your husband did with Dolores Price, that she didn't, in that interview, mention uh, Jerry Adams' involvement in the murder of Jean McConville? As, as what I know and what has been said in the affidavit of my husband, uh, the Boston College interview that he conducted with her did not discuss the McConville case. Right. I think, I think that there are, you know, before we get lost in the minutiae of this case, I mean, there are much bigger issues at stake here. I mean, I, I think sometimes that people, it's very understandable why the McConville family wants justice in relation to what happened to their mother. So do many, many other families. But the thing is, I think some, sometimes I think that people forget that in the Good Friday Agreement, these issues were supposed to have been dealt with in a different way. You know, we decommissioned the weapons. We let the prisoners out of jail. This was all supposed to be um, in the past, the whole thing of criminal prosecutions. But the problem now is that there hasn't been anything to replace that. And it's, it's more and more obvious that, that there is a need for it. I mean, there's a lot of attention at the moment in the Republic and in the UK and, and even around the world to the Jean McConville case because of the prominence of Gerry Adams, which is kind of natural. But the fact is that in the North at the moment, if you look at the papers and if you listen to the news every single day, there is some story dominating, which is about the pain of some family that have been denied justice, whether it's the victims of the Le Mans mm. bombing, the victims yeah. of the Bally Murphy massacre, victims of loyalist collusion with security forces. The past is a huge <coughs> yeah. live issue in the North, they've and people here and elsewhere are ignoring that. They've decommissioned the weapons, but they've recommissioned the past. And this is, uh, instead of having these be a legacy issue that is laid yeah. to rest, it's handed on. But still, on. It, it's, it, isn't it fair that the people, that the relatives of the victims of the conflict in Northern Ireland know what happened to their relatives. Well, that's relatives. what they want to know. I mean, absolutely. Yeah, but Helen also, McKendry isn't it says fair she may not that get... that people are brought to justice for these horrific uh, uh, deeds? But what kind of justice are you going to get? And as John Larkin had pointed out, the mechanisms in the legislation that's been agreed by the very politicians that pretend they don't know what they've agreed to is that the, at the maximum people will serve two years if a successful com prosecution can even be brought or a conviction can right, be yeah. obtained. And the likelihood of a conviction being obtained, given the fact that you're talking about 40 years ago, 30 years ago, yeah. uh, it's All very right, little. I want to go to a few other matters. But, uh, but just, just, yeah, just to uh, say that the commission, yeah. the commission on the Disappeared, which has done enormous work in relation to this issue, they actually offer a form of limited immunity mm -hmm. to people who give mm -hmm. evidence which could lead to the discovery yeah. of the remains of the disappeared. So there's already a, oh, right, yeah, sort yeah. Of a model um, of that there. One of the people who was very much involved with Jerry Adams in the peace process was the redemptorist priest, Alec Reed, And uh, he was involved at every step of the peace process. And he was the person who talked to Jerry Adams, uh, who, who was prompted by Jerry Adams to go and see Charlie Hawhey in 1986, before Charlie Hawhey became teaching again. And he was the person 
who was intricately involved in building bridges between uh, the IRA and uh, the British government, eventually the Irish government and the British government. And, and he knew intimately what Ger Gerry Adams did. And uh, the, in, for a documentary done by TV3 uh, on Sinn Féin, uh, he, uh, Alec Reid was interviewed, and this is a snippet of what he said about Gerry Adams. Uh, he, I, I say, you know, that, 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 that there was a man sent by God whose name was John, you know? And it was the first of the Bible, John the Baptist. Well, there was a man sent, I, I would say that Gerry Adams was a man sent by God. In other words, he, he was part of God's providence for peace in Ireland, and he had, he had the ability. Uh, you know, to do that and to achieve that. That's an extraordinary thing for him to have said. Uh, and you, uh, uh, particularly extraordinary for him to have said that because you remember the killing of the Sioux soldiers mm -hmm. uh, uh, who drove accidentally into a funeral cortege uh, where IRA um, people were being uh, buried and they were brutally murdered. And he was the priest who went to them, tried to give them some solace, gave them the last rites, and his face was smeared with their blood, that because he tried to give them the kiss of life. And this fellow, like this was a, a, an apostle for peace, really, and he says this about Jerry Adams, as sent by God. Well, it's hopefully he didn't say that to the dying men. Bun? That Jerry will come and save you with his peace. He's sent by God a few years yeah. later. But it does suggest that uh, Adam, it, it does suggest an admiration for the role that Adams played in the peace process. Well, I mean, you have, you, I think myself that there's been rather too many men sent by God to Northern Ireland <laughs> and we could do without <laughs> most of them. But I mean, as far as um, Jerry, you have to hand it to Jerry Adams that he did play an enormous role in the peace process. And you also, it also has to be admitted that a lot of the people who are his most fervent enemies are those who resent the fact that he engaged in the peace process and who think that it was a betrayal of the armed struggle and the cause of all and the, it was, the yeah. IRA. And it was, of course, it was a betrayal, yeah. Uh, but he also played a large part in the war. That's right, <laughs> that's Seattle. right. That's, that's right, it's an extraordinary feature of him. Yeah. That, that, but the one thing you can say about the war is the war would have gone on without Gerry Adams. Absolutely. But you can't be sure the peace process would have gone on without Gerry Adams. Well, but you, you certainly can't say that. You no. can't be sure that it wouldn't have ended sooner without Jerry Adams. I mean, all right, yeah, yeah, way, yeah, yeah. All right, know? yeah, yeah. Now, they, just, just, the, just, just one further thing. Um, in the in that interview with uh, uh, Alec Reid, the redemptive priest, he also talked about his role in identif in in identifying where the disappeared um, had been buried. And this wasn't uh, part of the uh, documentary that was published, but this was uh, part of the interview that was done for the documentary. Just have a look at this. Well, what happened there was, I think, people disappeared. And the presumption was that they were shot by the IRA. That was a presumption. Um, then Jerry Adams said publicly that if they had shot people, they should say they shot them and why they shot them, in order that their families, to help their families. So, I don't know many, but what they, what they did was then the IRA leadership at the time, the IRA leadership that decided after Jerry Adams asked them to do it that they would um, give information about the people that had been shot and why they had been shot. But the IRA leadership, this was all that had all happened 20 years before. So the IRA, the contemporary IRA leadership hadn't a clue who was shot or why they were shot. And we were stuck because the other, the other, the other I were the IRA who shot them were gone. So they took they what they did was a kind of a clever thing. They spent a whole year looking for the people who grew, who, who dug the graves. You know the 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 IRA had shot them maybe twenty years before, and they spent a whole year I remember going around trying to find the men who had dug the graves for these people, and then. I, I used to meet them with balaclavas on them, and we'd go into a field and they'd say, I can remember being in a big field one day, and they said to me, look, there are two bodies in this field. It's, it's, go ahead. It's that indulgence of the fudge of Jerry Adams 
that has prolonged this. I mean, the, to, to listen to what he's saying, um, and the, as if he actually believed it, is staggering. That they're trying to say, well, 20 years ago we didn't know when when this is the man that's alleged to have ordered these things and would have very well known. And prolonging the agony of the families that are looking for the bodies of their loved ones and still can't find them. It's just it's sickening. I think it's interesting just uh, looking at what Adams has has said uh, in his statement about the arrest when he said I've never dissociated myself from the IRA mm -hmm. and I never will. It's as if he is actually gradually moving towards some sort of position where he might mm -hmm. just admit that that he was okay. involved. But I mean as I, far I'm as sorry, we've got to go to a break after the break we'll have just a minute or two after the break and we're going to sh show you the front page of the Irish Daily Mail. Join us then. Our show pal Paul asked, is the arrest of Jerry Adams by the PSNI a genuine effort to solve the murder of Jean McConville? And 54% said yes and 46% said no. Let's go to the front page of the Irish Daily Mail. Uh, family of murder Jean McConville vow to sue Sinn Féin leader for everything he owns. We want to bankrupt Jerry Adams over death of our mum. Uh, also, there are thousands are moving the dial. That's uh, the Pat Kenny, uh, uh, Sean O'Rourke. Uh, competition for uh, listeners uh, in the um, mid-morning. Um, uh, this thing about bankrupting Jerry Adams, I, I don't know how that will work. I think that the McConville family, and I've met many members of the McConville family, they are very bitter and very angry and their families have been extremely damaged and the, the birth children of Jean McConville are estranged from each other and angry, from each, angry with each other and the damage is immeasurable and like many other families who were similarly uh, suffered injustice um, during the, the troubles, they say these things, that they say these things and they mean them. It doesn't mean that it's actually in any way going to happen, but it is indicative of the deep pain and distress and anger that, that is there. I think that this is actually uh, the potential for civil action is what has motivated the PSNI's move to, to get the access to the Boston Archives, um, as has been noticed, noted in various places. The it, if that's so, it's utterly improper by the PSNI. Totally, totally. Yeah. And this is one of the things that I've, uh, we've objected to uh, with, and raised with the U.S. government in terms of why they facilitated the unlock request in the first place and why the subpoena has been sealed. Because and, they're well, trying to solve a murder. Well, but what based on what? And when you look at the MLOT, I don't want to lose too much in the detail, but the MLOT says you have to have the ability, a successful prosecution, you know, it should be successful to be able to request this stuff. We be strongly believe that the motivation was to get access via a criminal investigation to the Boston College material, which would never be able to use to secure a conviction, but once released as criminal evidence, would then be able to be used in a civil action. And we think that's always been the end game. Susan, well, do you Oma, think that the do you think Sinn is damaged by this? I, um, I think that uh, they may be damaged in, this, in the Republic in the sense that it's kind of dragging them back into dark times that they'd rather, that they'd rather not be reminded of while their new generation in the Republic is, is convincing the public that they're really good at dealing with the modern contemporary Ireland and issues of uh, cuts and austerity and so on. I, I think that they will deter maybe some people who might have voted for Sinn Féin who wouldn't be hardcore Sinn Féin voters, but it won't deter people who are solid Sinn Féin voters north or south, I don't think. I mean, they're not going... Who, who are people going to move to in the north, for example? They're not. All right. OK, that's it for now. For more on tonight's programme, log on to tv3.ie. The weather's next month tonight. Good night.